Hello, this is Jerem playing Oxygen Not Included, and I'm just about to start Cycle 61, my Moonlit playthrough, and I've got zero calories, so my system for generating meat isn't helping me out a lot for at least this cycle, so I'm going to have to get desperate and turn on the Micro Musher again. The uh, issue with that is the pitcher pump that I had previously set up is uh, has dried up. So I'm planning ahead. I want to get more dupes to have the critter ranching skills. So I'm giving them the proof farming so that I can have more critter ranchers. Make sure that all the critters as often as possible are in the high reproductive state, getting the most amount of eggs they could possibly get. Also notice that my ranches are overstuffed. That is because the drop off point, I forgot to click on the checkbox that uh, allows my dupes to wrangle them if they go in excess. So I have it set to three, which means if any of those rooms contain more than three critters, they'll automatically be wrangled, taking them to, uh, to f four or, or down to three and, and removing that uh, other pep to one of the other staples if it's available. So the focus has got to be on uh, making sure, just as always, every single egg that can possibly have the dang lullaby effect has that effect applied to it. So it hatches quickly, I can turn it to meat, and if uh, one of the stables doesn't have a pit, for instance, I can put it in. And it's a hard choice now between when do I uh, turn it to meat and when do I put it into one of the stables. Uh, generally speaking, I always wanted to go to the stables first. Because uh, if my stables start to dwindle in number, I'll start to lose eggs and the whole system won't, uh, won't be producing enough meat overall. So there it is. Got a micro musher uh, set up with some water. I've noticed the door is not in a great place. I moved that over there so that the other dupes would have access to meat. But Hugger, I just saw, walked into the room, or half walked into the room, dropped off an egg, and then left without being trapped in. So I'm moving that back. So that whenever Hugger gets in, back into that room, they get trapped so that I can spend uh, some time with them to make sure that little bite effect gets built or is applied. So just building a second micro musher and I've got a gift for uh, from the game and I'll see what is available. Oh, food, omelet, <clears throat> excuse me, 8,000 calories so I can turn off the micro mushers. I uh, have my dupes eat that. Fortunately, it's not meat but at least it's something and I don't have to bother with micro musher for this cycle. That uh, the rest of the time, I might start digging out some spots towards the uh, various geysers because it's, uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to work on the solar panels and solar panel research this game. That's because I only have one Wheezy Warp. The uh, scientist that is over there does not have the ability to dig through to get any additional uh, wheezy warts and my teleportation system is only charged to about 22 percent so that's probably going to be a future episode i'm probably just going to try to work on food starting off cycle 62 bringing back scientist actually unless there's a way for me to get and i think there is not quite but I think if I go through that ice up here, I think actually I can get scientists to get access to those few wheezy warts without giving them the skill to dig through granite. So that's nice. I don't have to wait for the teleporter to charge. And uh, maybe I will be able to make some progress in this episode towards uh, the research necessary for solar panels. But the focus has got to be on food. Partially for the carnivore achievement, but also <laughs> my dupes need food to survive. So the uh, lullaby effect goes on and on and on, making sure that I get uh, that applied to eggs, checking this throughout every single cycle so that uh, the moment I've noticed one, that uh, gets the benefit. Now, this is killing me, but I'm going to wrangle this pep. I would prefer to convert that to meat, but uh, that needs to go to the stable to, so that long term, I'm gonna get more eggs. So in order to make the scientists a little more comfortable, get them to mop up. And I'll start digging out towards, with the, for the rest of the dupes, uh, digging out the remainder of the geyser, or all the geysers for that matter. Just so I see uh, what, uh, what they are and where they are. Because I ultimately know I've got a water one, a polluted water one, and it's hot steam 500 degrees. I just don't know which one is which at this point. 
are, and, and by the way, if you want to know what uh, they are without actually uncovering them, you can see that in the star map. All right, so with the rest of this cycle, I'm going to let them dig that out. I'll let scientists dig out a path towards the wheezy warts. I'll keep applying the effect to the lullaby and hope, really hope, that I'm going to start to produce some uh, meat again for uh, consumption. So just notice that uh, my dupe was able to un or locate this. It's a water geyser, which is good. So that's producing water at 90 degrees. It's a little hot. But uh, it has future applications. But the short-term application is to build a pitcher pump on something like this because that can slowly take water out. And it generally doesn't matter what temperature that uh, water you know is being carried out in a pitcher pump unlike a normal pump where you would pump it through your base and potentially heat up your base. So I might as well source all my water that's going to be uh, coming out for a pitcher pump. So either that's the research or, an, or the research machine and hopefully the uh, not using the micro musher. But if I do, I can use water from here instead. And I'm going to dig out a little bit of area around the, uh, the hot water geyser, but not too much because I don't want a lot of that hot water ultimately heating up my overall base. So a little bit of good news in a base that has food problems. And it's, it's not so much that uh, I'm struggling with food, but because of the achievement, as I've said many, many times, I need 400,000 calories, 400 cycles. Uh, I just realized that scientists couldn't make it over that jump, so hopefully they'll continue to make progress towards those wheezy warts. Uh, but yeah, as I was mentioned, I've got uh, to start getting these eggs hatching and hopefully those critters will produce the eggs such that I can get meat out of them. Please, please, I don't want to slip by too many cycles without meat being consumed. I'm just looking to see if there's any other spot I can build the, uh, the uh, heavy watt wires where I'm ultimately going to put some of those uh, solar panels. So been in this room many many times if you've seen any of the other videos a lot of time is spent there with that one dupe just hugging those creatures but i'm at the point i've noticed i've uh, had some pips hatch and i don't so i'm still desperate for food and i'm going to uh, just bring some power down to the bottom of the base for future expansion but i'm going to finally be in a situation since I've got all the uh, pip stables full again to convert any of the new pips that I have some of them already have hatched to food going forward so it's it's all right it's, it's looking all right I'm nervous stress level maybe is like 15 percent so let's progress I'm going to do some research towards the uh, solar panel don't have the full research to be able to complete it but I can do the simple and uh, advanced research anyway I'm going to start um, fast forwarding a little bit through the hugging stage because there's really nothing new. It's just the same thing, me discovering which eggs need to have the little by effect and applying them. I'm finding uh, out if I can find any other dupes that can have uh, can be critter ranchers and making uh, progress towards them because I want several ranchers to exist. Whenever those uh, critters become glum, I want to have them be uh, treated the grooming station so that ups their egg production because I, I need all the eggs I could possibly get all right with the uh, rest of the time I spend digging out the final uh, geyser and I know this is going to be the polluted water one uh, at uh, it's going to do uh, bring out uh, material or wa uh, polluted water that is contaminated and it'll be 30 degrees so that'll be a much better source temperature wise than hot geyser. I'll just have to make sure I deal with uh, the food poisoning that's inside it. And I've got a system to do that. So I might as well start to dig that out. The other thing is I want to dig that out early. I don't want to do it just when I need it because you never know. You could dig it out and it might not be active for 30, 40 cycles. So I don't need it at the moment. But you know what? I want to have it available and have it uh, gushing out some polluted water so that by the time I actually might be in a jam, I'll be okay. So noticing one of my staples is uh, that I just dug through to get there is uh, not, it's too big by one tile. So very quickly gonna fill that back in because I do not want to be in a situation where my hatches or pips 
aren't happy and they start uh, not producing as much eggs because things are getting close in terms of whether I'm going to do that. So scientists has brought back the last of the uh, Weezy Warts. I've got three. I only, I, you know, uh, only want uh, three for my purpose, so I can send them back at this point. And perhaps we can start to do some research with those three Weezy Warts. I'll show you how uh, the setup for that is going to be here in a moment. In the cycle 65, I realized that I still have 270,000 calories of meat to eat. And I calculate I can do that if, if I'm eating, uh, every single dupe is eating meat. At this point going forward, this uh, 8,000 calories a day, I'll get this in 33 cycles. And I've got about 34 cycles left. Uh, it's going to be close. And I'm not absolutely certain I can actually produce the amount of meat for uh, every single cycle to be able to consume that amount. Anyway, I, I do have the ability to up the number of dupes, of course, as long as, of course, I'm ultimately getting more meat out of this. And I'm hoping by having more critter ranchers, that's going to happen. So doing some research towards solar panel, at least the basic and advanced research, I'm going to start digging underneath this insulation area to get some of the uh, aluminum ore, and I'll add uh, insulation back when I'm done. In this cycle, I'm getting a skill scrubber created. I'm going to send one of the dupes through that explorer because I don't think I have time to wait for one of the dupes that I've given the farming skill, the ability to get another point to get a critter wrang wrangler or a critter ranching. So I'm going to expedite this process by removing the skills from one of the dupes that has a lot of skill explorer and make sure that they get critter ranching too. And I may do that with a second dupe later on. I need every dupe to focus on food if they can. So that's, uh, that's what this cycle is about. Continuing to get uh, more and more nervous as time goes on. I'm matching the amount of cycles I've got left with the amount of cycles that uh, I predict it'll take me to get the carnivore achievement. So it is going to be excessively close. I have a few critters that are born every day, just enough to provide for food, certainly no excess. Uh, just having my dupes dig out some uh, aluminum ore underneath that insulation area and bring that in bins while my Hugger and a new explorer can, do, uh, can work with the hatches and pips. In this cycle, identify two new, uh, or two dupes to be able to have the critter wrangling skill. One that uh, was scrubbed, the other one that has another skill point that I'm able to eventually upgrade to the critter ranching. So that's going to allow more coverage of those, uh, all those rain, those um, stables. I've also upped the priority of the uh, grooming stations to be five to a six to make that the highest priority. I just want to make sure that the pips don't stay glum and that they're always at the highest egg production rate that they can be. So I notice I am starting to get some pips and some hatches. This is generating food, but ultimately everything that uh, comes out of the system is eaten right away, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it shows I certainly don't have any excess of uh, meat out of this system at cycle 70. So 30 cycles left. I'm. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. All right, so I have to eat uh, almost uh, 220,000 calories of meat before cycle 100. I calculate that I can, uh, I'll get this in 27 days, and I've got about 29 or so left. Again, it's pretty close, but it's still in my favor if everything goes well. I'm choosing not to plant the wheezy warts to produce radiation, which is going to work towards uh, doing the research for the solar panels at this time. That's because I would have had to pull at least one pip from the stable. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to do anything that's going to affect egg production. But if I get closer to cycle 100 and there's an excess amount of critters in the uh, hatchery area, then I may, in that case, choose to do so. Two other notes. I noticed that the, uh, the two water geysers are dormant. The water, hot water one's going to be active in 30 sec 36 cycles from now, and the polluted water will be active in 15 cycles from now. So I'm, I'm feeling good overall. I think I'm going to get this. 
but I'm going to have to keep pressing that incubator for everything that uh, it has. Nothing too exciting in cycle 71, continuing on digging some aluminum ore in various different places around the base, so I've got access to some metals, and uh, as always, doing the uh, lullaby effect on all the eggs that I have available. I've got a number of pips that have uh, hatched, so that's good, but certainly not in a surplus situation. In cycle 72, I'm starting to, to uh, realize I forgot the automation to take eggs and meat out of the stone hatches as I noticed a stone hatch egg was in that uh, room so they're not getting the lullaby effect applied so I'm making sure that I do that. I had to generate a little bit of aluminum in the rock crusher to be able to, to uh, finish that off. Also building up pipes just because I don't want my dupes idle while a hugger creates hopefully creates enough food and a meat for my base but I'm building a carbon line that's going to go up to the top of the base to ultimately fill rockets. Not that I want to go anywhere anytime soon and the reason for that is I want my dupes to stay right here and consume meat and then hopefully get enough meat that uh, I can forget about this carnivore achievement. All right, so I'm digging out a spot so that in the next cycle I can do some filtering. So I have a pump at the bottom of my base here, and that is targeting carbon dioxide. And I don't want to just throw that up into the rockets because some of it will be chlorine, something that I may want to uh, utilize, and some of it may be oxygen, stuff I want to keep in the base. So I'm doing some filtering. I don't have a lot of power because I'm going after the super sustainable achievements. So I'm going to put in two efficient uh, filters. So I'm going to have a gas reservoir with a gas shutoff and a sensor to be able to uh, detect chlorine and carbon dioxide. Chlor chlorine will be stored in that uh, second gas reservoir, carbon dioxide in the first, and it's ultimately sending up to rockets. And if it's something else, it'll just send it to the vent on the right side. I'm also putting automation on the pump to tell the pump only to operate if it does not detect oxygen. And I've got a filter on that so it just doesn't go on and off all the time. I'm going to set that to setting of about 20 seconds. So only when I am out of oxygen in that particular spot that it's detecting will that pump go on. So just building a gas reservoir up here that's going to store additional carbon dioxide with a telescope. And I'm going to put automation next to that telescope in a second. The reason for that is scientists is the only one that's going to use it. And they're going to get radiation poisoning if they just continually look at the sky. So I'm going to turn that on and off. Uh, actually, it might even be better as a cycle clock or something if I forget. But I'll try to get in the habit of watching scientists and their uh, their ability to handle the amount of radiation when, when they get... Oh, I've noticed that I missed some wires when I upgraded my circuit, and that is not good. So I'm putting that as a high priority fix those. Okay, I wonder how much aluminum ore I've wasted in the last little bit, hopefully not too much. Anyway, as I, as I was saying, I get a telescope so uh, scientists can start using it, but I can also turn it off so if they get too much radiation, uh, I'll be able to let them recoup before they go back. Okay, latest calculation, it's gonna take me 26 cycles to get the carnivore achievement, and I've got 25 left. Not good. <laughs> and the reason this is happening is because uh, just enough cycles are going by where I'm just not getting the meat out. There is a silver lining in all of this that in that uh, I've got 20 pip eggs. This is the far no largest number of pip eggs I've ever had. I've put that in the resource view on the right so I can monitor it. Also have nine stone hatch eggs. So about almost 30 eggs. If you can if you include the hatch egg, actually it would be 30 eggs so that is good if i can just charge those uh towards getting hatched by applying the lullaby effect i think i'll be in a situation of producing more than enough m food for eight uh, dupes every cycle but as i mentioned even in the ideal scenario i'm not going to make this achievement with eight dupes so i'm going to have to up that to nine dupes sometime soon maybe even 10 and when this system ultimately gets going with an excess amount of critters i'll uh, i'll start upping my dupes so they can consume this uh, excess meat 
Hopefully, anyway, we'll see how all this goes. So at the end of the cycle, two stone hatches are born, and I'm able to convert that to meat for eight dupes. That's something. In cycle 76, I start a space program of building rockets. Don't plan to uh, have any dupes go out in space until the carnivore achievement is done. But uh, I, I have idle dupes around, so I might as well get that uh, processed or, or started. And I already have the pipes to pump up carbon dioxide. I actually need to finish the carbon dioxide engine uh, research. And then I'll be able to start that and build the, both the outside and inside of that rocket while I'm trying to generate more meat. In cycle 77, I've noticed I've got a lot of idle dupes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig out a spot while uh, research is happening on the carbon dioxide engine. I'm going to dig out a spot above the polluted water uh, vent and I'm going to use that to filter using chlorine the poison, uh, food poison that comes from it. So I'll get just regular uh, polluted water out of that system when it runs. Anyway, this will just be the digging out that uh, area. Cycle 78 comes with a new discovery. Scientists is up by uh, looking at the stars and discovered new planetoid. So there's other two other fields for getting resources, but this oil planetoid is uh, is close. It's going to be accessible via a carbon dioxide engine, and it's going to be the first one that I would want to travel to anyways, ultimately getting some oil because that is going to make a huge difference from with some of the things that I can build. So looking forward to uh, having some plastic and building some steam turbines once I do a trip over there. But I don't want to do that until, as I mentioned before, I get this carnivore achievement. I need every dupe. In fact, I'll need a ninth dupe to uh, start to consume the amount of uh, meat. The good news is I've got an excess of critters. Not a lot. But it's like the first time I've actually gone in between cycles with a number of uh, critters that are not being converted to meat because I don't need them yet. I've got a bank of calories of barbecue meat. So that's awesome. I'm putting together our, a rocket, even though I don't want to fly it anytime soon. I might as well use uh, the time that uh, I have to construct it so when I do need it, it'll already exist for me. And like always, applying the lullaby effect on a set of eggs to make sure I continue this streak of having critters, excess amount of critters in this uh, incubation area. Starting off cycle 79, realizing that uh, we've got some major radiation sickness that gives a minus four to athletics, minus 50 to stamina, that they sleep longer, and minus 30% to uh, bathroom use speed. So that is the state scientist at. So we're telling, they're turning the telescope off. Gonna let them recover and then uh, they can do the remainder of the sky once they're feeling a little bit better. So not, uh, the other annoying thing is they're barfing all over the base. So whenever I notice uh, that happens, I'm going to uh, clean up. I don't know that uh, I can treat them in the medical bed, but just building that just in case. It's always a good idea to have one anyway. That way if someone becomes injured, a heat stroke or something like that, you don't have to wait for it to exist. But no, I, it does not look like they're eligible for that. So I'm just going to have to wait for them to uh, puke enough times to get rid of all the radiation from their system so that they're back to normal and perhaps I will uh, get them to complete the analysis in the telescope when they're completely done. So just starting a little bit of the walls of the uh, system that's going to purify the the uh, food poisoning in the polluted water vent that has not started to activate it yet but should in the ne next little bit. So scientists have passed out in that area. Alright, so I'm going to take on a new dupe. I just did a load there because I didn't like that one. So this one's called Doctor. They like medical stuff as well as science. I am just looking at the progress. So doing uh, doing all right with the carnivore achievement. But from this point on, I am able to consume 9,000 calories of meat, if I have it available, of course, uh, a day. And that's going to help. With, uh, with this. It's not going to be possible otherwise. It's actually absolutely necessary. Now the good news is I've got a lot of pips and some hatches there. Alright, so on cycle 80, this is going to be the last cycle for this episode. I have calculated that I've, or according to the achievement, I have eaten 236,000 calories of food. 
which means with nine dupes and assuming that they're eating meat every single day at a thousand calories each, I should get this achievement in 18 cycles and I've got 20. So we're back to being close, but on the right side of things. And as long as I can generate meat and there's a lot of, of uh, critters, well, you know, a good size uh, number of critters and eggs, because I also have to worry about future eggs uh, being into existence. I think I can make this happen. Okay, I'm in this situation where I have uh, 20 to 30 eggs lined up. They're continually being processed. All, just about every one of them has a little by effect. And when they don't, I put them through the system to be able to do that. So they're hatching quicker than normal eggs. I've got excess amount of critters than I have for the first time in a very long time in the incubation area. So I'm just making sure I pick out a few of them every day if I need them for a barbecue meat. And I took on my ninth dupe. And as I mentioned in the last cycle, I expect if assuming that I can get uh, meat, which I think I'm in a really good position uh, to do, if I can get every one of them to eat meat, I'll get this achievement in 18 cycles and I've got 20. So stress level is high, but uh, I'm optimistic at the same time. If you want to see if, if this all works out, uh, like this video, I'll post the next video and see you then.